Poison Ivy, darling. Happy Halloween, everybody. Super excited to have you here for another edition of What's Cooking Me? It's your girl, Vakanya. As you can see, I'm not quite Vakanya tonight. I is Poison Ivy, darling. I think I've got the antidote. We'll see. Anyway, so for tonight, as you can see, we are celebrating Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. I did want to take a moment to acknowledge the fact that I am a Haitian woman. Oh, my flower is coming out. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. This is what Poison Ivy would have said, and she would have kissed it. Anyways, so Haitian tradition, we don't normally celebrate Halloween. However, I am a firm believer that tradition doesn't always have to be followed strategically generation from generation. I think people should be able to make their own choices and um, think about things in a different perspective. There's different ways and different perspective that um, are out there. And I don't always believe that my tradition is always the only tradition or the best tradition. So with that being said, we're celebrating Halloween, baby! What the freaking drink? Not a fucking, but oh, wait, I said it anyways. A freaking drink of um, Jack Daniel mixed with some orange juice. I wanted something orange. I feel like I should have had something green, but it's okay. So, if you have not figured it out, I said it already, but I am Poison Ivy. And the reason why I chose Poison Ivy, I, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, Poison Ivy is a villain. First of all, she's a sexy villain. Second of all, she's a feminist. Third, she is somebody who believes in her objective. Mm, somewhat anti-hero, but not necessarily a villain because she believed in something. She believed in nature. She believed in protecting nature and the environment. And she was really only combating Batman because that nigga wanted to destroy everything. Oops, ah, not that nigga because he wasn't a nigga. But that hero wanted to destroy everything and here comes poison ivy letting him know that the environment is worth taking care of and the environment is precious and all of her plants as you can see i have my amazing darling here i just have to as poison ivy would have done if you have never seen poison ivy in action on any of the batman um, comics please do because i honestly believe that she stands for feminism, not toxic feminism, because I do have to say that there is a distinction between a feminist, which I will gladly say that I am, but I am not a toxic feminist. I do believe in saving the environment. So that is why I am the sexy Poison Ivy, Poison Vicky, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, happy Halloween. Welcome to another edition of What's Cooking V? We are going to get right into it and talk about what we're cooking today, baby. So first and foremost, as you can see, I have my Jacqueline Terran bell peppers that we are going to stuff these babies up. We're going to cut, call them the stuffed jack o' lantern. <laughs> and then I have some jalapenos that don't look very mummified at the current moment, but it will definitely be mummified to the third degree. <laughs> That's not funny, whatever. I'm quirky, I don't care. I'm poison ivy, it is what it is. So we have some um, already pre-seasoned, um, uh, what is this thing called? Y'all, I'm losing my thought. Um, ground beef. <sighs> it's because poison ivy wouldn't eat meat, but you know, whatever, we're eating meat because I'm poison ivy with a choker, so it's a little different. So anyways, I have my already pre-seasoned uh, ground beef. I do have some shrimp already pre-seasoned. Why did I say shrimp with the tea? It is shrimp. Ooh, look at this bitch coming up. <laughs> and then of 
course, you guys know, should know what this is. This is um, our famous a piece that I always use in every single one of my videos. If you don't have a piece, I will talk about what we can do in addition or in substitution of that. I do have some cut up bell peppers, different colors as well as some onions. And then I have already pre-opened because I didn't wanna like look crazy while I was trying to pop this open. But it is already open. I have some crescent dough as well as all of my seasoning. I have garlic powder, um, adobo, which is something that I always use. Um, I do have some Creole seasoning. You can find this at Walmart or any of your supermarkets. I have some grated Parmesan cheese. I have some hot habanero pepper jack cheese, as well as some cream cheese, and of course, sweet honey barbecue sauce and a little bit of my Goya seasoning products. Of course, my drink, which is a must every single episode because I am a functional workaholic, you guys. Oh shit, I said workaholic. I'm alcoholic, workaholic, same thing. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and go to our next step and I'm gonna show you guys what we are making today. Alright y'all, so we're going to go ahead and start with our already um, seasoned ribs. I had these seasoned overnight. If you've never seen a video of me seasoning my meat or anything like that, make sure you check it out. But this is the pre-seasoned um, barbecue ribs. I prefer to already pre-boil my ribs before putting them in the oven. Um, my hand is already washed. So it's okay, y'all. I'm, I'm mindful of my hygiene, I guess you could say. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and put these in here. We're gonna pre-boil the ribs for about mm, 10 to 15 minutes max. Um, just because I prefer to have my meat already cooked or pre-cooked, I say, before I put it in the oven with the barbecue. So I am definitely having barbecue ribs. Um, but you know, it's gonna be a little twist to it. I don't want to I don't want to spoil it yet But you guys will see what I will do next is just put a little bit of water in here and then cover this baby up We're gonna move on to the next step. Like I said 10 to 15 minutes. We should be good And then we're gonna move to our next topic All right y'all so next up we're gonna go ahead and take our already pre-seasoned ground beef I use a piece, of course. If you don't have a piece, um, you can always use all of these ingredients that I have here, which is a lot of our Goya products that I already mentioned. Um, and then also these packets of Goya products, which is like Sazon or the chicken flavor. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and start with cooking our ground beef, which this right here is really for the stuffing of our jack-o'-lantern bell peppers. So, we're starting with um, cooking this and then we're gonna go ahead and add some peppers. Um, as you can see, I definitely forgot to have this on super hot, but it's okay. It's gonna cook anyways, y'all. I'm not gonna give y'all no raw type of food. So anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and just spread this out as this is getting hotter and sizzling on the um, bottom. And then next thing we're gonna do is grab our peppers. I'm gonna wait until this starts sizzling a little bit more. So just kind of like stir it um, to get all of your ground beef cooked. The more you stir it, the faster it cooks. Um, we don't want this to cook all the way through, only because we're gonna stuff it in the oven after we uh, stuff our bell peppers. So I don't want this to be like burnt, right? Because again, it's gonna be already cooking again um, in the oven. So just mash it up real good. This should have, have already been pre-seasoned. So you really don't need to add any additional um, seasoning unless you feel like it needs it this is good kind of sort of so we're gonna go ahead and sizzle that baby up a little bit the first thing I'm adding is some adobo you guys this is the same basis of um, seasoning that I use in my um, it piece which is a Haitian seasoning mix it has a whole bunch of stuff in it if you want to see how I 
but I am adding some garlic powder. You have some Creole seasoning in here, just a dabble, and then some black pepper. Again, just a dabble of black pepper. And then the next thing that I'm going to add is really some chicken flavor or bouillon flavor uh, powder seasoning from Goya, which I use literally all the time, you guys. I'm not putting all of it, again, because this already has some ippies in here, so it should have already have like a base of seasoning. I'm just adding additional one because it felt like it needed it. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and add some bell peppers, some onions, different color bell peppers in here. I don't wanna use all of it because there is um, another item that I'm gonna make. So I'm gonna use the rest of my peppers in something else. But all you're doing, again, you don't need all of your vegetables to be fully, thoroughly cooked. You just need to saute it because what's going to happen is when I put it in the stove, in the stuffed bell pepper, it's going to be baked again. So you don't want it to be too cooked. You still want some crunchiness and some nicely cooked um, uh, onions as well as bell peppers. So this is what we're going to stuff our bell peppers with. I do have some orzo pasta that has already been cooking, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, that I'm also going to use in addition to my um, ground beef and peppers inside my bell peppers. So by the time we come back, you're gonna see what my ground beef, my orzo, hmm, I actually made an episode on that, so you guys should definitely watch it on, and see how I make that. You're gonna see what my uh, stuffed bell peppers look like. I do wanna show you guys what I am doing with the shrimp. So by the time we come back here, we're gonna have already stuffed bell peppers with both the ground beef and the shrimp. Alright y'all, so next up, we're gonna start with our shrimp. This is another topper in addition to our ground beef as well as our orzo pasta stuffing. I did wanna make some shrimp because I realized that not everybody eh, eats meat and some people might be vegetarian or pescatarian or whatever have you, but this is a, just a different option. Uh, something else that you can use to stuff your bell peppers. Um, I did put a little bit of um, butter in here and then this is already the pre-seasoned shrimp that I went ahead and added on here. Keep it on high so that way you can get it already cooked. You guys, you don't have to cook this like fully thoroughly because we're going to stuff this in our bell peppers in, in the oven. So you don't have to like have it like super, super, super duper cooked. Next thing I'm going to add is a little bit of um, peppers and onions, just like I did with our ground beef. So if you don't want to eat the beef, this is another suggestions that you can do. I'm going to do both because I'm extra and I'm not apologizing for it because I'm poison ivy baby or actually she wouldn't say baby she would say darling so this is how it's looking right now you guys it's looking super colorful super amazing it smells amazing all I have on here is my seasoning which I use it piece all the time um, the bell peppers and the onions and a little bit of um, butter I didn't use oil for this one and I'm not going to add any additional seasoning because as I thought it's parfait 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 I feel like poison ivy always kisses people so mwah. anyways this is like mwah, good like just super good you don't need to cook this super like like five minutes or anything if anything I want to say one or two minutes we just need to get it some color and um, we need to get all of the flavors in there so that way by the time we put it in our stuffed bell pepper um, it's not overly cooked but it's the right amount of cook so when we come back we're gonna have our bell peppers already stuffed going in the oven and then really our ribs should be just about done pre-cooking and then we can go ahead and start putting our barbecue sauce for the grand finale 
All right, y'all, so we're gonna go come and check in on our pre-boiled uh, barbecue ribs. Um, they should have already been like really thoroughly cooked. Again, no more than 10 to 15 minutes um, because we're gonna put them in the oven. I did um, use butter as a base of my uh, pan only because I don't want the barbecue ribs to stick to the bottom so we're gonna go ahead and put these babies in here and then on top of it add our barbecue sauce so for the barbecue sauce what I did was can you guys see the base or the 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 stew of pre-boiled barbecue ribs i am going to use that mix it with the barbecue sauce and add some frank's red hot because i put that shit on everything we're gonna use some frank's red hot um, in addition to our barbecue sauce to really glaze this so what i did was i have my barbecue sauce i had already done this and basically mixed it in with the pre-boiled sauce and just start to glaze this baby i am going to go over it again to make sure all parts of my ribs with kind of like a painting brush i don't know what it would be called in an official chef's language because y'all know that i am just a chick that likes to cook i ain't no chef now but you know i do chef shit but i ain't no chef so anyway so you're gonna use this brush or whatever it's called in chef's language to kind of make sure that you glaze over your barbecue ribs these are the butter that is already on here and then we're gonna put this in the oven and by the time we come back this will already be cooked honestly because this was pre-cooking for about 15 minutes max in the oven you're going to leave it really like another 15 minutes max um so 30 minutes 30 minutes minimum 35 minutes max for your barbecue ribs to be fully and thoroughly cooked and then um, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when I am all done and being creative with it because again it's poison ivy baby or darling be right back all right y'all so I didn't show you guys this but I did use some Orzo, orzo, I think that's how you say it in Italian, Italiano. Um, so I did use some orzo pasta and um, as well as our already pre-cooked ground beef with some bell peppers in there. And then if you don't eat meat or anything, I did make sure that I have a substitution that you can also use, which is shrimp. If you are a vegan, vegetarian, you don't eat shrimp or seafood, you can just simply do something else as a stuffing. But for right now, this is what we're doing. So although this looks like rice, if you guys have seen my other episode, this is not rice, this is actually pasta. What I am going to do is start with a little bit of, a, of our rice. You guys, you can see that this is like a jack-o'-lantern, like I mentioned. Um, it might spill a little bit over because of the smile and the cutouts, which I got a shout out to my amazing brother. He actually did this. I want to show you guys some behind the scenes, so make sure you follow my IG at whatscookingv.com. And also, if you have not already subscribed, please make sure you subscribe to What's Cooking V because why would you not, right? Like. Why would you not want to see this amazing content that I'm giving y'all? So anyway, so we have our pasta first. We're going to go ahead and do the first topper, which is um, our ground beef mixed with our veggies. Um, I am going to put this in the middle. And then I do want to put a little bit more of our pasta on top of that. That looks like rice, but it's not really rice. And then some more. It's kind of like a lasagna topper, you guys. So a little bit more of ground beef and our peppers. Like, can you get a close-up of how amazing this look? 
like y'all i did not cook this all the way um because we're gonna put this in the oven um so this is the first batch the next one we're gonna do is a similar process but except for this one we're going to add our shrimp instead so super easy super fun um super tasty because like can you just imagine how amazing this is going to taste once we're all the way done with it can you guys see the the the, the jack-o-lantern that my brother made for us so we're gonna finish stuffing this and then the next thing really is adding some of our toppers which is some cheese some pepper jack um not pepper jack uh, paprika a topper so that way it can give it a golden color and then by the time we come back you guys are going to see what it looks like already baked i am going to put this in the oven for no more than 10 minutes you guys because i don't want this to overcook i don't want it to look crazy i want it to look parfait because that's what we do that's what poison ivy would do that's what i'm going to do um if you're not as parfait as i am please get on board because like what are you waiting for so we'll be right back with what this is going to look like next up all right y'all so next we're gonna move over to our mummified jalapeno peppers stuffed jalapeno peppers so um like i said they're going to look like a whole bunch of mummies because we're keeping up with the theme of halloween i am using some habanero pepper jack um cheese you can use any type of regular pepper jack cheese um i think there's only one other regular pepper jack cheese um and then in addition to the pepper jack cheese i am going to use some cream cheese to kind of give it a little bit more um i guess you could say thickness so that way it's not like super runny and you have it um enough to be molded when you put it as a stuffer in your jalapeno pepper so just Again, y'all, y'all know how I am. You're gonna have to go with your ancestors on that. I don't even know what to tell you how much cream cheese to use. So we're gonna use enough cream cheese to where it holds itself together. And it seems like I'm not even using half of what is in here. I'm just using a little bit, um, put it in here. So in addition to that, I do have some um, black peppers that I will put in here. Um, I have a little bit of the Goya product seasoning. If you don't use or want to use the Goya product seasoning, you are welcome to use some salt and pepper and just leave it at that. But you know me, your girl is not bland by any means necessary, so I don't ever do anything bland. So I'm gonna use some Goya product, um, chicken flavor season, or any other type of season that you want to use in substitution of that. Um, and then next thing that I want to do and add on here is really some um, lemon juice. And then you guys, like after you add your lemon juice to just give it a little bit of zestiness or just an additional like, mm, like ooh la la type of flavor. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and whisk it all of this all together. By the time you guys come, I am going to take this, stuff it in here and mummify our jalapeno peppers. So I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like next. And we're gonna stuff this baby in the oven for about 15 minutes and then our mummy is definitely going to be. <laughs> mummified that was not an evil laugh but <laughs> still not an evil laugh <laughs> all right y'all so our food is done let's go ahead and see what we have for our halloween themed healthy themed poison ivy plant-based themed meal with the exception of our ribs so i have the dead men ribs with a stab right through the motherfucking heart. I'm just kidding. Um, no, I'm not though. Um, so basically what I did was just kind of like use a bell pepper, stab it right in the heart. And these are supposed to be your ribs. I know we're supposed to have 12. I don't think this is 12. This is probably a baby's ribs. 
but that's kind of terrible because why would you want to kill a baby? <laughs> Y'all get the point. I didn't have enough space on my plate, so it's the idea that thought, it's the thought that counts. So anyways, this is stabbed right through the heart. My brother said this is a Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't want to call this a Jeffrey Dahmer because this is like OD crazy. I think Jeffrey Dahmer was a crazy ass person. But this is the dead dead, dead men's rib. Um, and then in addition, I have our mummified jalapeno poppers, which is stuffed with our um, cheeses in here. I have cream cheese, pepper jack cheese, and then I wrapped it with our crescent dough um, to kind of like give it a little bit of um, definition and also popped it in our oven um, to bake for a little bit. And then of course our jack-o-lantern stuffed bell peppers. Some of them have the top, uh, the cover on them, some of them don't. Um, but basically we have two different um, stuffed bell peppers. We have our, um, um, how do you say this? Our uh, beef and our orzo pasta stuffed in here. I also added a little bit of color or I guess you could say decoration, which is some parsley, fresh parsley flakes. But I toasted it a little bit. Um, the top is still fresh, pero it's okay. Um, but basically what I did was just stuff it in here. This one is stuffed with our um, ground beef. And then we have some, if you don't eat ground beef, like I mentioned before, stuffed with some shrimp. If you want to take a look and then of course it's Halloween so we want to make it super festive but this is it you guys this is the finished product happy Halloween to all I do want to take some moment to try this and see how it came out because it wouldn't be a cooking show if I didn't try my own food so First and foremost, we're gonna go ahead and try our bell pepper. Um, I am left-handed, as you guys know. I'm gonna try the meat-flavored one. The bell pepper, um, I put this in the oven for no longer than, hmm, I wanna say 15 minutes for it to pre-cook or for it to cook thoroughly. I didn't want it to overly cooked and I don't know how to cut my bell peppers but um, basically if you guys are looking I have my orzo pasta and then my ground meat and some parmesan cheese on top um, and placed it in the oven for about um, 10 to 15 minutes mm, it's very nice and crunchy and well cooked not overly cooked but just the right amount of cooked um if you don't eat the ground beef or any type of meat i'm sure the shrimp is just as delicious mm. guys i just want to take a moment and savor this because it's so good so so good okay so I'm gonna try the jalapeno peppers, the mummified jalapeno peppers. Y'all, I'm about to eat a whole pepper, a whole jalapeno pepper. We'll see if I have a Viola Davis moment in those uh, <laughs> spicy, or like if I start sweating like Idris Alba <laughs> in one of those episodes. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh, you guys. You gotta try this. Oh my gosh. This is so good. So the dough has a little bit of sweetness to it. So it's like a mixture of sweet and spicy. Super good. We're gonna go ahead and try our ribs. Or I should say, our, what is this? Um, our rib cage. After we done kill this dead man. <laughs> <gasps> Happy Halloween! Let me know what you guys are planning on being for Halloween, but. Mmm. Mmm. Super yummy. 
Anyways, this was my Halloween edition of What's Cooking V. It's been an amazing pleasure to have you guys here for this edition. I am trying to be a little bit more creative. I hope you guys liked it. Please drop some comments, suggestions on in the uh, chat. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, you guys, if you have not. I don't know why you wouldn't have, um, but go ahead and do that. And I will see you on our next episode of What's Cooking V. It has been a pleasure. Happy Halloween, everybody. I hope you have an amazing Halloween weekend. And on that note, it has been a wrap with What's Cooking V. I'll see you next time. Bye.